Hello and welcome to Tradecraft Security Weekly, episode number four. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and in this episode, I'm gonna be talking to you about how to use categorized domains and trusted certificates to, uh, to, to make your interpreter sessions more stealthy and not get detected by, uh, by various security products and protections that are in place in a lot of organizations. Um, now, let's talk about why that's even important. So, you know, it's common um, for organizations to try to protect outbound access, right? To try to protect, uh, you know, the, the various mechanisms in which some internal user or internal system can connect out of the network. And, you know, when it comes to command and control channels, we can we have a few choices, right? We could either, you know, try to connect out over like a direct TCP port to, to a remote command and control server, like let's say port 22, um, or we could try, uh, you know, various other channels like DNS or ICMP, um, or, you know, whenever organizations start locking down the perimeter pretty well, most organizations still have some sort of web traffic that they allow out. A lot of organizations still have like a proxy where they proxy the web traffic for, for internal users because most businesses still allow people to get to the internet for various day-to-day -day business. Um, and usually that's through a web proxy. So when it comes to us as attackers trying to get out of an organization, um, you know, most of the tools we use are actually proxy aware and can connect through a proxy and connect out through uh, like a, an HTTP channel. Now, um, you know, whenever, whenever organizations start restricting that down, it's usually based off of categories. So like they don't always just allow every user to get to every website on the internet, right? Because that would, that would be very bad for productivity. Um, so what you typically find is that, you know, you've got these specific categories that organizations lock down. Like let's say they don't want people going to gambling sites or hacking sites or whatever. Um, and now for us as attackers, that can be bad because if, if we're using a site that's, let's say not in a category that's allowed, then it's our C2 channel is going to die. Um, it's going to be blocked. And, in general, uncategorized sites are blocked by default as well. So things that the proxy or security product has not seen before are typically blocked. Um, so how do we go about finding a categorized domain to use uh, for our C2 ch channel, right? So, you know, without me like setting up a website for a year or whatever and having, um, you know, the proxy company, you know, verify that my site is actually like something that's good, um, there's other ways you can do it a lot faster. And one way is to go look at expired domains. So um, you can actually find domains that have recently expired, meaning ones that have, uh, you know, like, like the, the bill has been forgotten um, or maybe the, the company didn't have like a reason to have their website anymore. But previously they had something set up where whatever proxy company thought that it was some sort of category, right? So what you do is you go look at expireddomains.net um, or you use the tool Domain Hunter, which will also look at expireddomains.net and find recently expired domains and then check the categorization of those domains. So, um, you know, you go and like get a list of a few different domains you want to look at, check the categories on them, see if you find one that's, that's in a site or in a category that would be something that you um, could potentially use, right? So let's say it's like, I don't know, like a, a health category or something, which that's the one I'm gonna use here in a moment. Um, so you go, you find the site you want, you go register the domain, right? You go buy it, point it at your own C2 server. Now you have a categorized domain that a normal proxy will probably trust and, uh, and allow directly to your C2 server. Um, and there's, all, there's an excellent post on the Black Hills InfoSec blog by Brian Furman on how to do this just thing. Um, so if you want more information, check that out. Uh, and then, you know, when it comes to making sure that our, our SSL sessions or, or TLS sessions are, appear to be um, valid, uh, we can set up a trusted certificate as well on the, on the actual web server. And it's super easy now with Let's Encrypt. Uh, like, seriously, like, it's, it's ridiculously easy to go and get a free uh, trusted certificate that most browsers will trust because uh, Let's Encrypt certs are trusted by pretty much every major browser. Um, so if you go to HTTPS certbot.eff.org, um, there's various drop down menus for setting up tr this, uh, the let's encrypt certs on your web server. So go do that, install the cert. You now have a, a valid categorized domain that has a valid trusted certificate that pretty much every browser will trust. Um, you know, the, and another reason why you would want to do this with a trusted certificate is because Meterpreter will use uh, like a built-in certificate for H reverse HTTPS. 
And I've seen that actually get caught um, by various security products. Like they're detecting the, like not, maybe not, they're not detecting like the binary or, or whatever the payload is on the, on the client side, but they're detecting that, that session uh, establishment based off of the, the cert that's on the other end. And um, simply just installing a, an actual valid cert for the domain will bypass that sometimes. Um, so let's go ahead and go jump over to some demo stuff real quick. First off, I, I wanted to show you um, Domain Hunter. Let me hop out of this real quick. So, um, all right, Domain Hunter. Let me show you what this looks like real quick. So Domain Hunter is pretty cool. Um, it will it will go check uh, the expired domains.net site. Um, by default, if you just run Domain Hunter, it'll grab like the latest 100 sites, I think, and check the categorization. Um, if you do give it dash R, it will check whatever number you give it. So like, let's say we just want to look at four domains um, and then go check them. So it will go grab, it will start looking at expired domains. It will find, you know, a site here, like they found this book, PENG.com. It's checking blue coat. Um, and you can see like it gave it like an entertainment category. So that might not be the best one for us to use because, you know, a lot of organizations don't want their employees visiting random entertainment sites during business hours. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and kill this because I, I did already find one that will be, um, that will be useful for us. So, uh, the one that I found, uh, was actually categorized as a health site. So, um, the one I found was ssppayments.com. So we're going to use that. So let's go ahead and go back into my screen session here where I've got uh, Metasploit set up. So uh, you've probably seen m plenty of other demos where people set up, you know, Metasploit sessions and, or, uh, you know, get get their Metropiter session or whatever. But um, there's one small thing that's going to be slightly different in this one for uh, the SSL part of it. So we're going to use uh, Exploit Multi-Handler. We're going to set our payload to Windows Interpreter slash reverse HTTPS. And after we get that, we're going to set our L host to the domain. Let's go. Come on. There we go. Set L host to uh, ssppayments.com. That is the, the categorized domain that I bought. We're going to set the L port to 443. Um, we are going to set, this is, this is where it gets a little bit different. So we're going to set the SSL or the handler SSL cert to, uh, to our cert. Um, the one that we just set up with, uh, with let's encrypt, right? So, cert. so that's where my, my handler SSL cert is. Um, and so this will cause interpreter to not use the built-in, uh, cert at this point. Um, we're going to also set enable staged encoding because that is an additional mechanism that will allow us to bypass a few different security products. Uh, we will also set exit on session to false because we don't want, um, we don't want our interpreter listener to die after a single session because more interpreter sessions is, uh, more, you know, all, way better. Um, <laughs> set stager verify cert so like this is a, another thing that's um very useful too when it comes to setting up a interpreter HTTPS session is this will actually verify that the cert on the other end is what it's supposed to be um so as opposed to like if somebody like was man in the middling and doing like an SSL decryption um I believe this would prevent that from uh, connecting out and then let's go ahead and exploit dash j so now we've got our listener on port 443 let me go ahead and go set up a payload now so I'm going to use MSF Venom to to generate the payload. Um, you know, you could use you know any any other tool that you know you would want to gen up a a interpreter payload. Um, I actually am a fan of Veil. Um, Veil Evasion is a great tool for ginning up payloads that uh, typically bypass AV. Also, there's Unicorn from TrustedSec. I'll probably end up demoing some of those other tools um, in another episode. Um, but for the sake of demoing just this specific SSL connection, um, I'm going to use MSF Venom. I'm going to give it the dash format of XE. So um, basically, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a binary that is going to establish a session to my ssppayments.com server. Um, on port 443. And I'm going to just call it rev HTTPS, uh, .exe. So that will gen up the binary. Um, the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get it to the target somehow. 
And in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna host a, a simple HTTP server using Python. Um, so Python has a really awesome module. If you give it python-m, um, you, can, you can specify the H, uh, or I'm sorry, simple HTTP server. And that will actually just set up a, a web server um, in the current directory on that, on that Linux box on port 8000. You can give it a different port too if you wanted, but for the sake of testing, we're gonna do it on port 8000. So let me go over here to uh, my, my target system now. We're gonna go out to sppayments.com, port 8000, and there's my, my payload, okay? So let's go ahead and download the payload. There it is. Let's go ahead and just save it to the desktop so we can see it. All right, before we run it, let's go back over here. I'm gonna kill this uh, Python server. I'm gonna go back into my Metasploit session here. Um, so now, you know, we've got the listener up. We've got our payload on the desktop. Let's just run it, see what happens. So when I run this, it should attempt to connect out. Yep, and you can see it's verifying the SSL cert uh, on the C2 server now. So we have a interpreter session opened. And there it is. So interpreter session one, um, now using a valid SSL cert and also a, uh, a categorized domain to connect out of the network. All right, so that is it for this edition of Tradecraft Security Weekly. Um, you know, as always for the blue team, um, you know, domain categorization, it's, it's, it's defense in depth, right? Like it's, it's awesome to have. Um, but it's not likely going to prevent all of the C2 channels um, through your proxy, right? Um, so, you know, some products detect the, the HTTPS channel, like, like I mentioned before, but simply adding a cert um, might actually bypass that as well. So, you know, it's all about defense in depth. So, you know, finding ways to prevent the payload in the first place is probably where it's at. Um, there's a few links here for you. Uh, you know, as always, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Daftac. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.